30 and flirty and thriving. 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 30 flirty and thriving. 30 flirty and thriving. 30 flirty and thriving. There you go. Done it. Right. Am I 30? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not flirty or thriving. No. No. Oh. Is that where you've been for the last two weeks and go? You've been stuck been in, the cupboard, in the cupboard just doing this? Hiding in a cupboard. Would I'm 30, flirty and thriving. Come on. It's not working, is it? It hasn't worked. No. Nonsense. Yeah. I think it only works if you're 13. Ah. And you can so go is that why we're been watching this movie, Gav? I, I think so, yes. What go, go, go. are we watching this week? Can you remember, Gary? Yes. But, uh, this week we're watching... Uh, 13 going on 30. That's the one. Hello, folks. In case you hadn't guessed, this is the My Favourite Film Podcast with me, Gav Smith, and... And me, Gary Coleman. Fantastic. He's back. It's been a little while. We had a week (laughs) off without him. Um, I've been in a cupboard chanting, literally thriving. And it hasn't worked. He still looks 55. This will always make make much more sense uh, if you have seen the movie, 13 going on 30. (laughs) And if you haven't, probably a good idea to watch it now. Yeah, because pause. we're going to have a spoiler-filled yes. discussion now with Ariane Shireen, yeah. com- comedian, writer, brilliant comedian, and editor of what was it, Homes and Gardens magazine? Something like that. You weren't paying attention, were you? I oh, wasn't. Edit, edit, she edits uh, a fashion magazine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. Anyway, yes. Yeah, so here's our chat with Ariane about mm-hmm. thirty going no thirteen going on thirty. <laughs> You're fifty going on demented, I think. <laughs> So on her 13th birthday... Uh-huh. Check this out. Wishing dust. She only made one wish. I hate being 13. I just want to be grown up. And she woke up 17 years later. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the show, uh, Ariane, uh, who is, I'm, I'm assuming, not 13, going on 30. I'm sure you're a lot younger than that. How are you doing? <laughs> it's so smooth. Now I'm going to be 42 in July. No way. I, no way. No way. I wouldn't have guessed oh, that. I can't say. wait till I'm 42. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> shut the shut up. Life, the universe, and everything. <laughs> exactly. So mm. I'm, I've got high hopes. Everything comes clear at that age. It really does. It's amazing. <laughs> Before we start, do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself, Ariane, and your relationship about with, me. With, with film? Yeah. Who are you? What are you yeah. doing? Film. What's that? Well, this is interesting because my dad was actually a film lecturer oh. at the University of Westminster. He specialised in film. So you'd think that <laughs> I would have chosen something like Apocalypse Now or Citizen yeah. Kane or something yeah. kind of highfalutin like that. He yeah. taught people such as uh, John Ronson. He taught him. Wow. He taught Charlie Brooker. Wow. So... Wow. You know, both big, <laughs> you know, big telly and film uh, names. Yeah. So um, the film that I have, have chosen tonight. <laughs> oh, shit, Potemkin. <laughs> <laughs> it is, of course, uh, the chick flick, 13 oh. Going on 30. Awesome. Um, and the very interesting thing about this film is that it features a girl who loves a magazine and then she wishes that she were 30. She's 13. She wishes she was 30. And she wakes up and she is a magazine editor. And I've just got a job on a magazine wow. as editor. Oh, word. On website. I know. So, like, oh, she says in the film, um, I'm Jenna Rink, big time magazine editor. <laughs> so I've been going around going, I'm Ariane Shireen, big time magazine <laughs> editor. <laughs> so, Gav, we've got a We've got to redo the introduction. At the end, we'll rec- <laughs> you know, it's got Ariane Shireen, big time magazine editor. Absolutely, yeah. If I'd known that, I could have done the introduction better. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's great. She also then you? says, I'm a tough bitch, but um, I'm not a tough uh, bitch. Don't no worry. Comment. No comment. <laughs> Wasn't it tough? Biatch, anyway. Yeah, yeah. But she whispers it because she's embarrassed because she's 13. She's only 13, yeah. Oh, yeah, beautiful. <laughs> um, <laughs> You've kind of given us a little bit of a plot synopsis there of the film, but can you give us a full sort of plot synopsis of what 13 going on 30 is all about? Sure. So <laughs> it's about a geeky 13-year-old girl called Jenna, 
and she's having a hard time of it. She's just turning 13. She doesn't like the way she looks, even though her best friend Matt does like it because he's in love with her. And this bitchy group of popular girls, they play a cruel prank on her at her 13th birthday party. They tell her that the hot guy at school wants to do things with her in a cupboard. (laughs) And so she goes into the cupboard and then they all leave. She's really upset, goes back into the cupboard. He's got her a pink doll's house that he spent ages making Mm. and he's given her a sachet of wishing dust. And when Jen is crying in the closet... Um, She's kind of rocking and um, the wishing dust falls down and she wishes that she were 30 years old, like the models in her favorite magazine, Poise magazine. Um, And the headline is 30, flirty and thriving. And she wishes she was 30, flirty and thriving. (laughs) And she wakes up age 30 and she finds out that she has her own fancy flat, um, gorgeous flat in New York City. She's got this hunky boyfriend called Alex. And she's got a job as editor of Poise magazine, the magazines that she always used to idolise. I mean, obviously, from that very quick synopsis you've given there, you know this film really, really well. How many times do you think you've seen it? I have um, probably more than 10. More than 10? Just 10? Maybe 13. (gasps) Going (laughs) on 13. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah I you know I never watch films twice because I tend to think life is too short yeah fair enough yeah definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely but this one there's you a have. lot of good films out there there are there's a lot of good films there yeah is. but it's my feel-good film it's like when I want to feel warm and happy inside I was gonna say then... so what, is, is that why this is your favorite film though it's, it's the one that you go to yeah. when you're feeling just a little bit down and you want to wake up and feel better about yeah. life and it's lovely and you can watch it with everyone. Like I've watched it with my little girl who's about mm. 10, 11. Yeah. I've watched oh, it lovely. with boyfriends. I've watched it with like friends, everybody really. Um, and, well, I was and, surprised that you enjoyed it because, you know, it is a, well, it's a early film. I'm surprised I enjoyed it. I, I, can, I, can I share? <laughs> can I share the group? When you know we get all different types of films to watch and review and things, and when I saw it, I thought, "Oh, good grief! What was this for?" I really enjoy. I do love. I do love. I do love rom coms. I really do love rom coms, um, and I did enjoy it. I thought it was really good. Um, so thank you for for sharing it. But the can I share what? Got, can I share what your review oh, was that you oh, gave oh. me, Gary? <laughs> what was? What did I say? Am I allowed? Gary's review yeah. of me was well. It's not shite. <laughs> <laughs> um dot 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 and then continue to say i think it was actually really good you did yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it's I, obviously- because i think gab was panicking as well at this point was, gab hadn't seen his panic that's yeah, fine it, yeah. it's, it's uh i've got a quick question for Ariane before we go on. Go on. the this is this came out in 2004 and it is it is like sort of a teen girls film but, you know, kind of more your daughter's film in some ways. How old were you when you first saw it? Did you see it in 2004? Did you see it back then? Yeah, or? I was 23. Right. And I right. had been asked to watch it because I had started writing for something at the BBC that was for teenage girls. Right. right. And it didn't end up coming to fruition, this, this thing that I was writing for. But I went to see it with... Um, my best friend at the time, who later became my husband, who later became my ex-husband, and he didn't really enjoy no. it. He... Yes. <laughs> Just checking. Just yeah. Checking. Um, he didn't enjoy it because he's like, he's sort of quite sort of lofty. Like his favorite film is um, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. And he's sort of very, you know, so he sort of turned his nose up at it. Um, but mm. yeah, I'd rather watch it than, than any sort of art film or anything like really slow and black and white and stuff like that. It's just funny. It's a funny film. And it's, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's warm hearted and it might not, I don't know. It, it does like, cause I get quite emotional at the end because, you know, they clearly love each other and they're not gonna. Oh. Yeah. Sad. It is. So sad. Yeah. And also, also mm-hmm. my first boyfriend is the one that got away. So uh, he went uh, and he married the girl after him. And I think it sort of suits me to think that he still thinks about me. <laughs> That's so now sad. You're fe- it? But now it's actually happening because now you're a, you're a top magazine editor. Yeah. You've got to find a doll's house and dust. Yeah. <laughs> we can this. You'll, you'll bump yeah. back into him and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Start learning the thriller now. Yes. <laughs> Get doing that dance. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But I'm right, it's, aren't I? I'm right that Thriller came out in 1983. I think so, yes. Oh, I don't know. It sounds don't about know. right, to be honest, because I'm thinking... Um, it must be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where was younger. Yeah, what, yeah I was younger than 20, so, yeah. Yeah. Because I think Bad came out in 1987. Yeah. So, yeah, she should really have been doing something of Bad, but Thriller is a much more popular record than Bad, so yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. why, yeah. It, it's got the it's got the moves, doesn't it? It's got the dance routine with it more so than I think Bad, because Bad is just kind of copied off Thriller's dance moves anyway. I think to a certain extent, so, right? Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> it's uh, I'm going to do this one. It, it's a, another one of a glut of body swap movies. Really, there's so many films like this, starting with Freaky Friday way back whenever, and then going forward, all the other types, big and whatever else. It's kind of that same type of thing. What separates this film from those films well i mean it's much more of a love story so freaky mm. friday mm. like is her and her mom swapping yep. places yep. and big is him getting big which, which is is similar yeah um but it's got this added thing where instead of just becoming you know 30 he has also he's just finding himself in a 30 year old's body. So, yes. you know, everybody thinks he's been kidnapped and he has to send notes saying that he's fine. And, yeah. you know, so it has all that sort of subtext, which is, I think a bit darker. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause obviously his mom, I remember he walks into the kitchen and his mom takes a knife and thinks that, you know, he's an intruder. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, whereas this is, I mean, he's got similar scenes, like um, when he gets with the, the toy store executive and, yeah you know, she's coming on to him and he doesn't, you know, Mm. he can't compute it because he's, you know. Mm. Um, But I think this is like a proper love story and it's it's more more nostalgic and it's more about um, the kind of the one who got away. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. what if you could have a do-over and do you regret anything? And so it puts all these these kind of questions into the, the reader's mind and also it's set in two time zones so it's set in the past and it's set in the future mm. whereas um big and Fre- freaky friday are both just set in in the current time yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so i think i think those are the main differences yeah there's a lovely nostalgia to it i really enjoyed the nostalgia yeah just to the 1980s and things yeah brilliant yeah one of my favorites i mean i love the soundtrack because oh, that's probably that, yeah <laughs> Yeah, but also I love that um, they uh, play uh, Vienna Waits for You and then they have mm. this big montage of everything. She, and it's so sort of heartrending. And yeah. yeah, I loved it. I love it so much. Yeah. Um, well, you look a bit emotional, guys. <laughs> I, was there, I was back there. I was just back in 87 <laughs> for a second. Yeah. <laughs> nice place to be. Anyway, um, Let's talk a little bit about the cast and the crew then. Um, cast more than anything else, because I kind of looked into directors and writers, and to be honest, none of them have done an awful lot before this or after this. I think Family Ooh. Guy is kind of their main sort of thing that any of them have done um, wow. from point of view of the director and writers. But Jennifer Garner um, was at this time was on Alias on television, so she was kind of becoming this massive star at the time. She'd just done Daredevil with... Ben Affleck. Yeah. So she was kind of really up there in the, the stakes as an A-list celebrity. What what do you think of Jennifer Garner in this and how she plays Jess? Oh, I think she's absolutely perfect. I yeah. think she's she's perfect for the role. She's so believable and she has this sort of winsome cuteness where she can totally play a 13-year-old yeah. um, in a in a 30-year-old's body, just yeah. so believably. Yeah. I mean, I think all the actors are great, but I think um, some more so than others. And she just she plays the role to perfection. Um, but Mark Ruffalo yeah. is... That's where I developed my Mark Ruffalo crush. Right. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Me too, I think. He, he's a little bit, I don't know... He's very into his environmentalism. I had to unfollow him on Twitter because he kept talking about fracking. And right. I'm sure he was devastated. <laughs> <laughs> Not like he followed me. We weren't mutuals. Um, I do really think that he is a good person, though. And I think that that really comes through in the character of Matt. I kind of feel that they're sort of one and the same. Mm. I don't think he mm. had to reach too hard for the role. Yeah. Um, 
Whereas like the Hulk, I feel like he probably doesn't get that angry in real life. <laughs> no, I think he's probably him. quite chill. <laughs> this was kind but... of his, his first leading man role. What do you think was as a leading man then? Is he oh, he's great. Yeah. And he's, he's just to be superficial for a sec. He is so <laughs> gorgeous. He's so gorgeous. And, and I Googled him and he's actually quite short, but that's okay. Mm. You know, I'm five foot, I'm five foot two. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, so <laughs> he's he's married. He's very happily married to um, his wife is called Sunrise. Oh. You can insert your Didn't own joke that. about going down on him. <laughs> <and stuff. laughs> it doesn't go down on him. <laughs> but yeah, um, he's brilliant and he's just so genuine. And you can kind of sense. So like, first off, he's very reticent and he's kind yeah. of very reluctant because he's like, I don't know, Jenna, don't your crowd go to St. Bart's for Christmas? And he thinks that she's quite superficial and yeah. he thinks that she's a cow yeah. because she was the leader of the six chicks and they were all horrible. Mm. And But actually, when he gets to know her, he falls back in love with her and he realizes those feelings have never really gone away because he says, you know, I think I once saw you at, through a frosted window a few years ago at Christmas. And you can kind of tell that... He was probably looking through that yeah. frosted window yeah, yeah, yeah. for her. Yeah. Um, and you can tell that he's not in love with Wendy and that she's totally, you know, his sort of next best. Like yeah. Wendy's his fiance. Yeah. 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 Mm. Well, he says that at one point, doesn't he? He says something like, sometimes you don't get the dream house. But I you think can get the line he says. Close. Yeah. yeah. I think it's really clever the way he plays it because it, it, I think. Um, Jennifer Garner is just like ridiculously beautiful. Yeah. And this idea that this ridiculously beautiful woman just knocks on your door and he's so wary. He's so scared and wary, you know, and he plays it so well. He plays hurt. He's been really hurt and damaged. Yeah. yeah. And that's the whole kind of engine for the story. He's just too hurt to commit to this beautiful woman. Um, but he's also really cool. Like, he just goes, you're mm. not Chinese. He's not like, <laughs> yeah. oh, my God, it's Jennifer Garner. But um, I think, I think you know, you say she's ridiculously beautiful, and she is. But I think he's also ridiculously beautiful. Like, just... He, he, he's, yeah, he's he is. Yeah. He is. Yeah. But, he's got, he's, but he also has a kind of a look that is kind of... I mean, he's, yeah, he's a very good looking man, man but... But I think this thing, again, this vulnerability kind of makes him mm. in, a, in a man watching it goes, I say, so I watch him and go, yeah, I'm probably about that kind of, he's probably about as good looking as me. <laughs> he's clearly not, he's way better looking than me. But he's got that kind of, that vulnerability. He's not, you know, he's not uh, George Clooney, is he? He has a, he has a no, charm. Yeah, he's not, the vulnerability he's not, that makes him. He's not suave. Like, he's not like that kind of yeah. smooth, smooth mm. kind of, you know, smooth operator that you feel yeah. like, you know, I think George Clooney, you feel that he's a bit, he's a bit James Bond. He could totally play James Bond. Yeah. Whereas I can't see Mark, Matt Ruffalo, Mark Ruffalo, whose, whose name is Matt, <laughs> confusing me. And Jennifer's name is Jenna. And yeah. Oh, it's confusing, isn't it? And Lucy is Judy. So it's all kind of, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I kind of can't really see him playing Bond in the same way. No. Like he's more sort of, if Jennifer Garner is girl next door, then he's sort of boy next door. And that's yeah. literally what they were to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think he's, you know, what's so interesting is that he's so believable as the mm -hmm. adult math. Mm -hmm. And um, Lucy says to him, oh, you've lost your puppy fat. How does the beef stay warm in the winter? <laughs> and, um, and the funny thing is that, he and Jenna were geeky kids yeah. who have become beautiful adults. Mm. And Tom Tom, Tom Tom, or Lucy, as yeah. she's now known, yeah. was a beautiful kid who has now become not particularly attractive. Yeah. And I think that that, I think that Judy Greer is one of the best. Like, she's just such a great character actress. Yeah. And you, this sort of, this, this resentment and bitterness and jealousy just sort of seeps off her yeah, like yeah, the yeah. whole way through, yeah. which is, I think that's brilliant. Like yeah. she, I think she is probably the best character in the film. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say Judy Greer, this is the type of character that she, she's not really been in any films where she's been the leading lady. This tends to be her bit part character that she's this, I don't know, bitchy kind of girl yeah. that comes in at some point. That's kind of the role she always seems to get. 
Yeah. Um, she was in Arre- I loved her in Arrested Development. She played, was it a secretary? She played some in Arrested yeah. Development. It was just terrifying. You know, there's yeah. some bitch. It was terrifying. Yeah, she's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's a shame because I've seen her interviewed and she seems really nice. I'm sure and she, she is. Said- <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. Very like, acting, wasn't she? Think yeah. about. <laughs> <laughs> well, at, at the end of this, um, this film, like, because I had the DVD, because obviously you get the DVD <laughs> when it's your favorite film. Well, yes. And there are outtakes. Ah. There are outtakes with um, with Mark Ruffalo and Alex in the film, just being really goofy with each other and making jokes. But it's her talking, um, Judy Greer talking quite earnestly about how she was not an attractive kid and how she didn't look anything like Tom Tom when she was that age. Yeah. And, you know, I think I think it is like it's quite believable the way that she that she kind of acts in the film. And I don't know if she's drawing on those like emotions that or inside her or if she mm. just had to imagine it but she's so realistic yeah. It's, yeah it's kind of very sort of she's she's sort of quite sort of scathing like she says to jenna um if you're going to start lying about your age i'd go with 28 <laughs> and, you know, she's always sort of subtly jenna's just said i'm 13 isn't she jenna's just went, i'm 13 yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, "Oh, the slip dress is uh, very uh, 1980 or 1990 mm-hmm. or whatever." She's always subtly undermining her and um, saying, "Oh, Jenna's drunk," you know, in the meeting and being like slightly, I don't know. Yeah, like like she is her friend, but she's also she feels like she's trying to get her in trouble. So like yeah. when she when she flags up that she's drunk in the meeting, and then when she says. Oh, that Mr. Hottie over there is totally scamming on you, yes. or whatever she says. <laughs> and um, obviously, she thinks she, she means the little boy. Yeah. And so she's like, you know, do you want to get in jail? But she's like, um, even though she knows that Jenna has a boyfriend, yeah. she's still mm. sort of stirring a little bit yeah, when yeah, she yeah. says, Oh, mm, that yeah. guy fancies mm. you, you know? Yeah. Yeah, she's constantly mm. that through it, isn't she? She's quite, she's quite mean. But I guess that comes from the character she was as a young child that that's what she always did she was the the bitchy leader of the um the six yeah. chicks wasn't she so yeah. she hasn't changed yeah let's talk about other standout performances i'm guessing that andy circus has to come in this as um a hell of a performance again i mean he's a lot better known now as a, a cgi actor i suppose he does all of the behind yeah. the scenes of golems and caesars and whatever else um yeah what do you think of Andy in this? Because he plays a gay editor and he's not a gay man himself. Gay. So yeah. what do you think of his performance here? Well, do you know? <laughs> I mean, it may just be like me being naive, having seen it when I was 23. <laughs> but at the end, when he says, is he Arthur or Martha? And she yeah. goes, no, Matt. And he goes, no, is he gay? <laughs> is he you gay? And he goes, oh, of course. Yeah. And I hadn't realised that he was gay. I suppose because maybe when I was 23, I didn't. I didn't really know what the sort of stereotypical, like, Mm. I mean, I think, like, obviously, like, gay people will act differently. But I think in this, he's actually trying to be quite camp. Yes. Yes. He is very, very camp in it. But I don't know if he comes across as being particularly far off gay. It is just more sort of a camp performance that he does, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he doesn't say anything in the whole film that would really suggest. I mean, he does comment on their dresses, so he's yes. sort of into the fashion. But you know, he I, works in a fashion magazine. Why shouldn't he? You know, exactly. So it didn't even occur to me that he was gay, and um, so that was like a surprise at the end. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's good that there is a gay character because there aren't any other gay characters in the film, but there's also like a real lack of diversity in other yeah. senses. So there's, mm. there's no major black or Asian characters. No, no. And um, yeah, there's no trans characters. There's no um, disabled characters. So it yeah. is all a very sort of, well, I mean, as you'd imagine for a film that was made, you know, 18 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. They didn't have such an emphasis on diversity, yeah. no. so they probably got a gay character and they thought that that's that's us done. Yeah. <laughs> you know? We've got a gay guy. Right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, Gary and I have watched a lot of sort of films of this type of era based in New York, and it's mm. amazing how white and straight New York was. Yeah, in the year two thousand. Yeah, yeah, or, or LA, California. Yeah, 
It's just full of white people, rich white people. Is that yeah. all there is? You know, yeah. yeah. It's bizarre. Yeah, I mean, if you think Sex in the City, again, mm. There's, mm, totally. there's Stanford Blatch and his boyfriend, and they're gay. But apart from that, there's no um, black or Asian characters. Yeah. There's no disabled characters. Yeah. There's, you know, so again, that's the same era, Sex yeah. in the City, yeah. um, and set in the same place. So, yeah, yeah I guess that's just par for the course, unfortunately. And these days, casting directors are a lot more kind of cognizant of, of needing to be to show diverse representation on screen. Yeah. Um, but back then they weren't. And as I say, having a gay um, character played by somebody who's not gay, that just, you know, they wouldn't have sort of blinked. Whereas these mm. days, mm. I think they do try and be a lot more representative. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So... Any other performances in there that you wanted to talk about? Any other actors or um, give a particularly good... What about the kids? What, what, do you, what do you think of the two kids? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah the I younger think versions good. of Matt and Jenna, yeah. Mm. I think they're good and I think they are very believable. And in fact, you know, what's funny is that Tom Tom, I mm. think, is a very believable Judy Greer, but they kept on making references to her nose job. Yeah. And I thought, well, why why do you keep on talking about it? Because because actually both of them could totally have been them as adults without yeah. having had nose jobs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought exactly the same thing. Yeah. I, th- I, I The line stood out as odd to me when the reference to nose having a nose yeah. job because Judy Greer's nose doesn't look as if it's been fixed. It looks like, no, no, it no, looks no. like the child's nose. Yeah, yeah. But she says, yeah. oh, your nose job is better. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. it, it's, it's odd, but I think Matt especially, you can totally see that that was childhood Matt. Mm. And I think they're just very sweet, very cute performances. Yeah. Um, yeah. And her, her teenage angst is so sad and so believable. Yeah. Like her stuffing her top with tissue and, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's Brilliant. like, yeah. you know, this, this is, you know, her, her mum goes, oh, you're, you know, it, it's fine, or I can't remember what her mum says, but she goes, it's not, it's fatal. <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> you know, it's one of those words in the, in the, 90, in the yeah. 80s, like fatal, or it's crucial, or it's, you know, all these words that didn't mean what they mean. And um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, you kind of can tell why she wants to be 30, because she's going through this really gawky, awkward phase. Um, and I think she she totally embodies that. So I think the kids, the kids are actually really, really well cast. And I think the whole movie is really well cast. Another one of the performances is the himbo, isn't it? So it's like the hunk, Alex, yeah, does yeah. His, <laughs> his, his sexy strip striptease. <laughs> <laughs> I actually covered my daughter's eyes when he was doing that. I felt that it was inappropriate. <laughs> I mean, she didn't want to watch it anyway, obviously. No. But it's like, you know, but, I, I can't imagine finding that kind of stereotypically sort of Love Island hunky bloke attractive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was so goofy. But I think what I like is that he's not like a horrible guy. He's not mm-hmm. like, you know, the, the nasty guy to her bitch. No. Because, I mean, she's not a bitch anymore, obviously, but she yeah. was. Yeah. Um, he's, she's just... He's just like eye candy that she has around to presumably have sex with. And then, yeah. you know, she's not actually very interested in him. Um, Doesn't appear to is she? I think that she is very much not exactly social climb is not the right word, but she she cares about being popular and she's always cared about being popular. Yeah. And I think that this is like the key theme of the film like don't worry about being liked and being popular or you end up being this bitch just like who has a bitch for a best friend who has you know this this famous soccer player who is oh no it's not soccer what is it it's the new york is it baseball ice hockey ice hockey hockey, yes 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 i was trying to think that as well i only watched this afternoon (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't see him uh, no, know, we don't I'm see him play on the ice and off the ice That's ice it. baby <laughs> mm-hmm, <yeah. laughs> but he's he's just kind of I think she has him because she's like this kind of celebrity power couple yeah. so she's editor of a magazine mm. he's like you know totally um, her sort of she looks good with him and they can be papped and you yeah. know look good at parties together yeah and then you see all these um, 
all these photos that she's got on her walls of, of like Madonna, Margarita's Anytime, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. And she really cares. She doesn't care about being nice. She, she's kind of junked her parents because yeah. they don't fit in with her lifestyle. Yeah. Um, she goes to St. Bart's for Christmas rather than seeing her parents. Yeah. And it's all about the glamour and the artifice and superficiality. She's had cosmetic surgery. She's, you know, um, even though I don't think the nose job thing ties in with like the actual visual. Yeah. I think that it's kind of indicative of the fact that they both want to be her and Lucy both want mm-hmm. to be mm-hmm. perfect yeah. and have these perfect lives, but yeah. not perfect personalities. Yeah. It's weird though that you talk about the the, the um plastic surgery thing. That doesn't then fit with the end. Not to spoil the end too much, but obviously she goes back in time, manages to correct her things, but she looks exactly the same. So <laughs> true. She still had the plastic that surgery. Such a good point. Maybe she never needed per- plastic surgery. Exactly. So maybe she was perfect anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's so funny that they've all got really strange last names, like Jenna Rink and mm. Matt Flamhaff. Like, how many <laughs> Flamhaffs and Rinks have you met in real life? Not many, not many. <laughs> <laughs> Just the two, I think. <laughs> I'd love to go through the whole film, but we'd probably have a two-hour podcast talking about an hour and a half film. So. Sure. If you were going to stick it on, you said you had a DVD, so you stuck the DVD in the machine and you press yeah. play, you can't watch the whole film, you're going to speed up. Where's the first scene that you're going to speed up to as being the one you have to watch to start this film so you understand it or whatever? Oh, probably the birthday party. Right. Mm. Because I think before then it's just, it, it, it's nice and it sets up her insecurities and it sets yeah. up the Matt's in love with her. But probably the birthday party is is where you'd start because that's the first that's the inciting incident as they call it in mm. film <laughs> terminology. Yeah, yeah. And we also use some good music there as well. We've got some talking heads in there, which is always good. Yeah, oh, oh, but not according to Tom Tom and the Six Chicks. Well, what would they know about music? I mean, come on, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stupid people, I, robots. <laughs> I, I'm with Matt on his musical choices. I would have left his yeah. mixtape in to be honest. But there you go. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so we've got the birthday party. They've obviously left her in the, the cupboard, as you talked about, and Matt's and that's then the the catalyst for her moving forward in time to being a thirty year old editor of a magazine. Where yeah. do you go next after that? So she's probably she's woken up as a thirty year old woman. Where yeah. which scene would you go to next? I mean, like maybe. I think, I mean, realistically, you have to watch the movie to work out what's happening. But maybe the next pivotal scene is like the magazine round the table and he's revealing that Sparkle magazine is scooping Poise magazine and getting all their exclusives and he doesn't know why. And we don't know why. Um, And um, the smart money is on Lucy um, throughout the film. Yeah, but yeah, it's uh, it's never the person you think it is, is it? So, <laughs> well, fairness, the, the person who it was didn't actually know it was them, which I guess Exa- is well, yes, true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound like they've got dementia or something. Well, yeah. well, she kind of has. She's just woken up in this thirty-year-old body, having missed out on seventeen years of her life, and she's just suddenly exactly. there, isn't she? So she has, to a certain extent, got dementia, and that she's forgotten the last seventeen years of her life. So well, that's what I find weird about the ending. Like she just speeds up. So it's like you really yeah. wanted to lose this huge chunk. Why don't you just go? I mean, I guess I get that it's good for like the purposes of the film. Yeah. But like for actual living it purposes, surely you'd want to have those 17 years with Matty and like, yeah. you know, be totally in love with him and help each other through the teenage years. And then, you mm. know, yeah. go to university yeah. together and just, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I must admit, I would have, I would have liked to see a montage there that so they kind of went from being teenagers and you see different pictures and you don't need that bit with them in the house either. It, it could just be yeah. a, a yeah, series yeah, yeah. of stills and that would be a nice yeah. kind of end. But I did think it was a yeah. bit of a strange end that they had to get them back to that that point of sitting on a, a sofa in front of the dream house. But there's different ways of doing it and there's always different ways of doing it, a, a film ending. Yeah. Um, so we've got the round the table, we yep. worked out that there's someone's leaking secrets. Where do you speed up to next? 
Well, I guess she's got to go and see Matt to introduce him back into it. Yeah. But I mean, realistically, the next standout scene is Thriller. Yeah. Oh, brilliant yeah. scene. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just so much fun yeah. and it always puts me in a good mood and it's hilarious. Yeah. I mean, like the fact that they all knew, know the dance moves, but I think the reason that I like that scene is because like Matt doesn't want to join in. Like yeah. he's totally embarrassed, yeah. but he he loves Jenna enough to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. in yeah. front of all these people, and then it gains momentum and everybody yeah. joins in. And I of course it, have you seen a, there's a thing, there's a thing on uh, YouTube about um a sort of leadership thing. I think it's somebody dancing at Glastonbury, doing a really weird dance. They're just dancing by themselves. Yeah. And, and and then, you know, everyone's kind of looking at them going, that's weird. And then one of the person goes over and one of the person starts dancing next to them, copying this weird dance. Ooh. And then seconds later, all of Glastonbury, all this festival, yeah. everyone's yeah. doing this dance. It's just this, <laughs> this idea that, you, you know, you, you need somebody to, to, to initiate somebody or something. Yeah, yeah. The, the really important person is actually the second person who comes along and sort of yeah. validates them and, that's what so he that did, of course. He, he yeah, validated yeah. it, wasn't it? Well, the weird thing is it comes back to the popularity thing, doesn't it? Because it's like if one person's doing it and nobody else is joining them, then they're like... <laughs> they're just weird, yeah. <laughs> but then if everybody joins them, then you yeah. want to be part of this popular craze. Absolutely, so yeah. it just kind of spirals. And, yeah, you yeah. know, I... But it's, it's such a feel-good thing. And yeah it's so much fun and I think it kind of shows that Jenna is not the person that she used to be because the adult Jenna like the bitchy Jenna would no mm. way have like started doing the thriller dance at a cool party yeah which yeah. you can you can see on the face of everybody else at the party because they're all looking at like what is Jenna doing and you can see it <laughs> and everyone was there well then when Matt sort of joins in then other people start joining in it, it sort of as you said validates the whole thing yeah well, yeah. it doesn't help that the first bit is like that jerky kind of head. <laughs> Do you know what's terrifying? What's terrifying is that I've just realised that I am living Jenna's life. Because not only am I becoming a magazine website editor tomorrow, not only do I have the one that got away, but yeah. I also, if you type into YouTube, humanist thriller, I have also been part of a... <laughs> Group thriller routine where we all do thriller. Right, we have to definitely link that into right, the we'll, uh, we'll link that the show notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just it's scary. I mean, I wow. hope I'm going to stay a nice person when I start working at the they, they all seem very nice, so you know. So for any listeners, if you check the link below, there will be a video of uh, Ari <laughs> doing it will. thriller. I'll send it to you. Yes, please do. Awesome. It'll save me finding it. <laughs> <laughs> um so where after thriller then where do we go after thriller after thriller let me check my synopsis so i think that i think that it has to be well it's that bit where jenna realizes that matt has wendy and that she's his fiance um mm -hmm. But then maybe we could speed forward. But I think um, I think Wendy's worth talking about because she's yeah, yeah. so clearly threatened by Jenna. Mm. And they're making nice where she's like, Maddie was the sweet one. I don't know if what I'd have done if it wasn't for him. And Wendy's like, I'm sure you'd have been just fine. <laughs> and then, like, they're like throwing shade at each other, yeah. but in the most polite sort of British passive aggressive terms. <laughs> 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 But she's a great actress, isn't she? I don't know what yeah. her name is. Sorry, should have no. done my research. But... Uh, Viola Collins, is it? Viola Lynn Collins. Ah. Yes, I think so, ah. yeah. I mean, she's great because she's kind of, she's pretty, but she's not as pretty as Jenna. She's yeah. like, she's kind of nice, but she doesn't, like, she's perfectly nice. But you see in her conversation with Matt where she goes, oh, you can take pictures of vitamin bottles anywhere. Yeah. And you yeah. can tell that. She doesn't really get what that photography is his passion and yeah. he absolutely loves it. And he's just taking pictures of vitamin bottles for a living. Yeah, but yeah. you know. She just wants him to move in with her wherever she is, and it's her life that's the important thing, doesn't she? Yeah. Because she's the, you know, the anchor woman and uh, yeah. you know, she 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 does the weather or whatever in the Windy City, and she's kind of she kind of feels that like she wants this perfect life and, and Matt is gonna be part of it. Yeah. Um you know, and she doesn't want to be this commuter couple, understandably, you know, because who would want to be like very far away from the, the man that you love? But um, I kind of feel like 
there's no kind of soul connection between her and Matt. Um, like she's sort of, he wants to be with somebody, she's there and he couldn't be with Jenna. So he's just going to yeah. make his, his yeah. second best. Yeah. He's settling for second best, isn't he? Yeah. Um, where do we go from that point then after Wendy and. From that point, I guess um, we would have the photo shoot for the redesign. So yeah. we know there's going to be a redesign and, uh, Lucy says it's the best sentence, and Jenna says, "No, this is a chance to, yeah, yeah. you know, um, to do something new." And then, uh, you know, so she does this wonderful photo shoot. She hires Matt, and they have a wonderful time. And um, you know, at at some point, uh, they end up going for a walk and kissing. Mm-hmm. Um, and they 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 uh, sort of relive their childhoods together. So yeah. she goes, oh, "I bet you can't can't beat me off the jump." And he goes, yeah. "I bet you can." So they like, you know, swing swing on the swings, and they do a big fall, and then they they kiss, and and they also have razzles, um, yes. which Whatever they, they haven't had since their childhood. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, it's just this lovely nostalgic scene, yeah. and you shouldn't really think too hard about it because. Really, it's a thirty-year-old kissing a thirteen-year-old, which is not, not, not good. <laughs> it, it's better but... than big, because <laughs> he but literally obviously... still is a twelve-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know, realistically, that they're two thirty-year-olds, yeah. so it's totally fine. Yeah. Um, and it's at not some totally point... fine. He's got a fiance. I mean, well, this well, is true. Cool. Cool. <laughs> she's got a boyfriend, Sorry. doesn't she? So you know, she's got a yeah, boyfriend. Yeah, boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but. But they don't love them and we know mm. that they don't love them and that they yeah. love each other. And so we forgive them as characters. Yeah. Because yeah. we know that they're both sort of, they've been, and I mean, uh, yes, just high on razzles, aren't they? <laughs> 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 well, Jenna has a boyfriend, but the whole way through, since she's turned 30, she has done nothing with him apart from trying to tack him with an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> and she has, um, she has turned down his advances. She's yep. ignored his calls. Yep. She has giggled while he tried to, you know, mm-hmm. make out with her. <laughs> and she's like covered her eyes while he's doing his sexy striptease. She has in no <laughs> way let him on. Like, no, true, <laughs> true. So, yes, I think Matt is more culpable here because he's literally about to get married. Yeah. Yeah. But definitely. he can't yeah, help it true. because he's Girl in love with dream. her. Mm. Oh. And she came before Wendy. Yes, so true. So we feel that it's actually okay because, mm. you know, she was his first love. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we've got the photo shoot, um, which I guess leads us to, uh, I suppose, and I might sound a bit wrong here, but the kind of predictable end bit, because there has to be <laughs> this predictable end bit whereby the nasty girl, played by uh, Judy Greer, who then yeah. uh, works out that there was trouble all along and that Jenna was actually the, the spy for Sparkle. The Sparkle and spy. Jenna has been stupid enough to leave I the evidence that. in her death drawer. So we, like... yeah, plot, plot hole, <laughs> massive plot hole. You wouldn't oh, know that. I know. It's crazy, isn't it? And plus, <laughs> totally. wh- why would she take that mail into work anyway? Surely that's why something is, you'd why leave at home. She... Why is she take it <laughs> And why is her office door permanently open? Yep. And... <laughs> know like yeah. especially if she's like banging her tracy's husband in there like, yeah she's just not a nice person <laughs> she's not a nice person but she's become a nice person yes. you know yes because she's still 13 really but yeah. she's obviously i mean at one stage she says i think it preempts the kiss she says and and i'm not 13 anymore yes mm. you know so yes. i think yeah yeah um, so the predictable kind of bit there, that we work that stuff out. But that leads to another huge plot hole, because why would Matt sign off those photographs, even if it was just, we're not going to use them? He wouldn't sign them off. That was a, a massive because, job that he did. He wouldn't, because he said, um, oh, I stopped trusting Lucy when she mm. stole my pop Absolutely. rocks in, in yeah. third yeah. grade. Yeah. So it's like, if she doesn't trust him, 
he would totally no way it, he doesn't trust her it's no no way would he sign that i mean i think it's more plausible that she got him to sign like i as a writer and i did um a script writing degree i did an ma in script writing and i am nowhere as accomplished and amazing as the writers of this film but if i'd been writing that film i would have maybe got her to get him to sign something unrelated yeah and then you know the top half you know like when you mm. when you fold it over or you know you know when people say like they go up to famous people and they they prank them and they say oh my um my nephew's a whole huge fan please can i have your autograph yeah and it's at the bottom half of a letter and you find that the top half it's folded over and it just like says you know something really awful like you know i certify here that i have a very small willy or whatever and they've got them to sign it you know so like it's very specific think, example very specific <laughs> when, when did you do that woman who too i have not, I've not done that. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not suggesting that Mark Ruffalo has a small willy. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. First, I unfollowed you on Twitter. Hasn't. Now I especially <laughs> like this. <laughs> He's still my dream man. But, um, yeah, I would get her to sign something, get him to sign yeah. something unrelated, yeah. or, you know, some way of, of getting that sign off. Um, but, but, yeah, he totally wouldn't have done that. But then, obviously, she um, has this big you know row like oh wipe that you know bambi seeing his mother get yeah, yeah. strapped shot and strapped to the back of a van lock look off your face mm. and um yeah judy greer is brilliant in that yeah but yeah. um jenna's obviously totally shocked to find out that she was the culprit all along yeah yeah oh yeah then um so like we li- we missed out the bit where jenna's presentation does brilliantly yes. and lucy's presentation does really badly which is why lucy is so angry and then she storms into jenna's you know and she does the whole setup with matt and everything like that yeah because she's been so publicly humiliated yeah um but yeah then um jenna goes to see matt and wendy's there and they have this again this quite sort of passive aggressive politeness yeah you know, oh, she's, he's gone to get his tuxedo. I know, men, leaving it to the last minute. And we know that he's left it to the last minute because he didn't want to get married. Yeah. Um, and his mind's totally not been on the wedding. It's totally been on Jenna. Yeah. And then she has this sort of massive chase across the city to get to New Jersey to try and stop the wedding, which is good. You know, I like that, that momentum. But she gets picked up in his taxi by Chris Grandy, who was the hot heartthrob yes. that, from when she was 13. And this is the only scene that I think is a bit mean because he's perfectly nice. Yeah. But he's portrayed as a total loser. Yeah, absolutely. Like, he's, he's ugly. He's fat. He drives a taxi. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, he's like, oh, I got to get your number. And she gets all angry, like, you know, kind of really high status, like, how dare you ask for my number, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. And I think that that is sort of more bitchy Jenna. That's what bitchy Jenna would do. That's yeah. not what nice Jenna would do. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, that scene never yeah. sat right with me, really. Because, no. like, so what if he's, like, got a low status job and he he's not particularly attractive? It's like she wasn't particularly attractive as a kid. And, yeah. you know, it's. She should be sympathetic. Mm. And this, but that, I suppose there's a different reading of the film, but mm. this isn't a time travel thing where she's travelled through time for 17 years, but it is some sort of dream that she's having in that um, cupboard that something's fallen on her head and she's having a dream. She's slept, <laughs> sleeping up. And this is just her perception of what her life should have been or might have turned into if she became the popular girl. So is that right. then just her reading of, that person as what she thinks he might become because he was a popular guy at school or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I guess you have to sort of suspend disbelief though. And hmm. so like I every time I've watched it, I've never read it as like a dream she's having. I've always read it. And it, it would it would make sense for it to be a dream because yeah. obviously she wakes up yeah. when she's in bed. So yeah. you know. Um, but I've always read it, taking it completely at face value. She is 30. She's yeah. woken up age 30 and this is her life, you know. 
Yeah, totally. And <laughs> that imply that magical sparkle I just know doesn't work. It's probably just a sort of metal or whatever. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about, Gav? Were you only 13 yes, yesterday, Gary? All true, isn't it? It's true. I mean, well, in all these Star Wars is wrong, Nick. They are all like, you know, with, with, um, with Big, it was the, like the Zoltan yeah, arcade yeah, yeah. machine, you know. Yeah. It's always some really. Mm. Yeah, well, it's really some really hokey device, but okay. obviously it has Seems to be because there isn't like any <laughs> realistic way in which it could happen. So, <laughs> I know. Sorry to no. spoil your uh, <laughs> illusions there, but yeah. And then so she gets to um, Matt's parents' house, and why it's happening at Matt's parents' house rather than at Wendy's because that's yeah. tradition. I don't know, yeah. but anyway, maybe she doesn't have parents. That would be sad. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah. That's a real down at the top. <laughs> Poor Wendy. She's not a parent, and now she's been left at the altar as well. <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, she disguises herself behind a, a vase of flowers, Jenna, and then she she makes her way up to his room where he's like getting dressed. Sadly, we don't get to see him without his clothes. Never mind. And um, <laughs> so he's there, and um, they Very have this big heart to heart, this big final scene where. Um, actually, the synopsis for this film ha- on Wikipedia, I was reading it, and it's total rubbish, right? Shall I tell you what it says? Go on, tell us, tell us. It says, Matt realises <laughs> that Jenna is from the past, and although he still cares for her, too much time has passed, but returns to Jenna the dollhouse he made her that he has kept for the past 17 years. That's not what happens. That's not what happens, no, you're right. She no. asks for the dollhouse, doesn't she? He has it still. And yeah. he doesn't realise that too much time has passed. No. He realises that he still loves her yes. and she still loves him. He says, I'm not going to lie. I have felt things these past few weeks. I didn't know I could feel anymore. Yeah. But, you know, Wendy and him, they've made a life together. Their parents are here. Everybody's here. Yeah. He can't let her down. He's made yeah. this commitment to her. And he says, you don't always get the, the dream house, yeah. but you can get awful close. And they're both <laughs> crying. Yeah. And it's like, it's totally, I might go into Wikipedia and edit it because it's totally. Someone should. Not, not, Someone not should. Do you expensive. do it. Yeah. <laughs> you, yes. Yeah, yeah, you, you can do, do that. that. <laughs> you. You're a magazine editor now. You do these things. It's literally well, your job description. Yeah, Wikipedia. So, <laughs> but I mean, it's just such a beautiful ending, but it's so yeah. bittersweet and it's so sad. And it's not what, it's not the Hollywood ending because it's totally not what you would expect. Mm, no. You know, you'd expect her to throw o- him to throw over Wendy, but of course he's an honorable person and he can't do that. Yeah. So um, there's no choice but for her to go back with the magic wishing dust <laughs> um, to the age of 13. And then they're out in the sunlight. They've just got married. And then they're in the house with the dollhouse behind the sofa. And they put yeah. all these pictures up and they offer each other razzles as Mr. and Mrs. Flamhaf, that famous uh, name. Flamhaf. <laughs> I, I have to point out again to our listeners from England to call that <laughs> Razzles as an American sweet, not a porn magazine. Um, it's good. There's people listening to this going, that's a very strange film that they're watching. What was that film? Maybe they're not going to think I definitely would have watched this film. That's brilliant. Felt effect is it porn magazine. A porno at the end. Yeah, that, that would be lovely, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> again, very different yeah, film. So that's the X rated version. <laughs> It's the MFF Awards. Standout performance. Well, um, the standout performance for me is Judy Greer because she's just so Mm. brilliantly bitter and jealous and she sees with this silent hatred. And I think that she does undercut and undermine Jenna at, at every turn but she she does that to everybody apart from her yeah. boss and obviously she she wants to she does it to trish sackett who's the editor of sparkle yeah you know oh yeah. you know please put some crab in your purse for later you're doing yeah. that badly you know and um she does it to um uh matt where she said how does the beef stay warm in the winter yeah yeah you know and and she she basically does it to everybody and um you know, obviously she bitches about Jenna behind her back to yeah. a colleague. And yeah, just just so kind of 
so horrible, but just the same, the same Tom Tom that she was age 13. She hasn't changed. Um, so that's, that's my favorite performance, really. Okay. Actually, I have never thought of this, but does Lucy do the, um, does she do the thriller dance? Because I don't remember her doing yeah, she, it. Yeah, she does. She runs in. I think when she everybody does else do is it. doing it, she does run in because ah, everyone's yeah, doing it. Yeah, she does it, do so. it. She's but one she of the last won't help Jenner out at the beginning. Yes. She she won't be the one to be like her, her sidekick at the nope. beginning. Oh. So so that's telling, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Do you know, guys, this is terrifying again because I had a best friend called Lucy <gasps> when I was 13. Wow. And um she turned out yesterday? to be a bit of a cow. <laughs> Sorry. Was that yesterday that you were 13? Uh, I wish. No, no. <laughs> she turned out to be a bit of a cow. So that is weird. That is weird as well. Yeah. This is um, so weird. This is so weird. This is so mm. this is freaking me out. Really freaking me out. But yeah, um she I think she is she for me, she is the best performance. But you know, there are a lot of great performances. Yeah. yeah. Gary, have you got a favorite? I I I think I think Jennifer Garner. Was yeah. just amazing in it. I really, really loved her in it. And I'd seen her before. I'd seen her in sort of Daredevil and yeah. um, Electra, and she was in Juno as well. She played Jason Bateman's yeah. wife in Juno. Yeah. Yes, um, yeah, the adopted mum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she's in, and I, and I read that she's in Dallas, uh, Dallas Spies Club, which I've seen, but I can't remember her in it. But yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, but I was just really, really impressed by her. And yeah. for this whole film to work, you have to believe that this this woman is a 13 year old child yeah. and yeah. I think her portrayal of a and now I've not nor never have been a 13 year old girl but <laughs> just so sure. unbelievable <laughs> you, can, you can imagine that a lot of actors or a lot of people if you say yeah. I right, pretend to be a child yes there's certain sort of tropes and things that we would do which which children don't really do it's us no. pretending to be children. No. it's just so well observed her, yeah. her, her physicality of being a child it's yeah. so well observed and yeah. I, was, I remember watching it going that's right. That's exactly what kid. There's a way where she kind of walks her head forward yeah. and things. Just yeah. so well observed, and yeah. it was amazing. And the first, especially the first half, where she is a child, and the second half she becomes more of a kind of a child adult. But yeah, yeah. And she's just the child. I, I was just blown away by it. I yeah. think it was fantastic performance, brilliant performance. But uh, also, I, we, no we sorry, we, no we haven't mentioned the bit that. Like she befriends a load of thirteen-year-olds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Like, so brilliant. She's, yeah. She's accepted by them as a 13-year-old, yeah. even though she's obviously not 13. But I think, did you choose Jennifer Garner just because Jennifer Garner is really hot, though, as well? <laughs> no, no. Well, do you know, well, well, the other thing is, do you know what? I, I, I wouldn't find her that attractive. This is an odd thing. But like, in a, like when Carmen Electra, well, she's supposed to be playing these beautiful women, and she just isn't physically my kind of beautiful woman, I don't think. She's very kind of, she, kind of gaunt and kind of blokish somehow. There's something mannish about her. Mm. Sorry, Jennifer, if you're listening. But I mean, <laughs> in this one, I think she just generally come across as beautiful. There's a, there's, a, there's a beauty to her. There's a softness to her personality, which is yeah. far more beautiful. It's the first time I've really seen her play a beautiful person. Um, yeah. um, I just thought it was, a, I think it was a wonderful performance. I really, really enjoyed the performance. Yeah. yeah. I must admit, I, I agree with Gary on this one. And it's for the same reasons. I think she acts very well as a 13 year old girl in the body of a 30 year old. And I guess in the same way as there's Tom Hanks did it. In big, you know, his performance as a grown man who is a boy is absolutely perfect all the way through. You believe that he still is a boy, and the same thing. In this, you believe Jennifer Garner is still a thirteen-year-old girl, just in a thirty-year-old body. So, yeah, it's interesting the casting because, sorry, if you, when, when you're cast, if you're going to cast Tom Hanks, Tom yeah. Hanks when he was younger looked very boyish. Yeah. Whereas Jennifer Garner, her, her, her physically, she isn't girlish. She, no. I, I don't no. think it looks. She's angular. The yeah. angular, yeah, and yet she just yeah. transforms herself into this child. It, it yeah. was amazing. To watch. Yeah, yeah. I um, think Tom Hanks is actually Tom Hanks is somehow sweeter mm. for some in in big. I think like he's he's just really really cute. Yeah, and I don't think Jennifer Garner is cute in quite the same way. No, no. Um, but thirteen year old girls aren't cute compared to twelve year old boys. You, you <laughs> sure. Yeah, have you got teenage daughters by any chance? I have. have you got I've got a daughter and a son. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm quite like bitter when you said that. Well, girls have, <laughs> I'm also a teacher. I deal with teenagers all the time and girls have a very different way of being a teenage girls are very different to teenage boys. Um, they mature so much faster. They're bitchier so much quicker. Uh, you know, boys at 12 and whatever else are quite, we just lump each other and then it's over with. Whereas girls will really oh. hold a grudge. And that is, 
it's just a thing as I've noticed through time. But uh, I think that's why Tom Hanks's performance as a cute twelve-year-old in the body of a grown man is very different to Jennifer Garner's yeah thirteen-year-old yeah. girl who's working out actually to be popular. I can do this, this, and this. Yeah, mm. girls are really so much more mature so quickly. They're and so mean, aren't they? Girls, they're so mean. <laughs> My daughter has literally <laughs> been sarcastic since she was about seven or eight. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I, yeah. Remember, I remember her saying, um, Mom, you know when you put all that makeup on when your ex-boyfriend came round? And I thought she was going to give me a compliment. I said, yes, darling. She said, yeah, you probably shouldn't do that again because I look really desperate. <laughs> 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 Just the amount of kind of snark mm, and yeah. like totally slays you i'm like oh my god that's like terrifying um it's scary but yes (laughs) (laughs) yeah um let's go to favorite scene then oh for me it's got to be thriller it just always puts me in in a good mood i mean i love that they all know the dance moves 21 years on which isn't actually the the 17 year gap in the movie as i say it's like 21 years it all happens down pat yeah and then they're all reluctant and they end up doing it and having a great time like the moonwalk i love that it proves Matt's love for Jenna, that he's willing to back her up in a very embarrassing situation where she's <laughs> just, you know, <laughs> stuck there with her yeah. head going. And, you know, <laughs> like if, if nobody backs her up, it's just going to be an yeah. absolute <laughs> tragic. <disaster. laughs> and it's a triumph because he, he comes to her rescue. Yeah. Gary, do you have a favorite scene? Um, oh, I'm torn. I mean, I mean, the thriller one, I, I think yeah. Ariane's probably died, really the thriller yeah. one. If it's like, it must be on YouTube somewhere. If you haven't seen the movie, go watch it on YouTube. It's a really, really brilliant scene. Um, as Ariane's also kind of nabbed that scene, I'm going to go for the one where she just wakes up and she's kind of walking through the house and she discovers she's got this massive house and this massive boyfriend in the shower as well. <laughs> in the whole, as I've just mentioned before, the whole thing re- requires you to believe that this is a child. There's a 13 year old girl, and it's just the, uh, Jennifer's performance as a 13 year old girl. It's just yeah. brilliant the physicality of it. Yeah, and so just. If that if if they'd got that wrong, then the film none of the film would really work. I don't Absolutely, think. Absolutely, yeah. Nailed it. That performance of a of a child, which point was brilliant. That was a brilliant scene. Yeah. But the thriller yeah. one is also yeah, awesome. Yeah, I have to agree with the. the... Calling. Go on. Sorry, go on. I was going to say. I... <laughs> go on. <laughs> I'll go. Uh, I was just going to say that I agree with that. That the thriller one's absolutely brilliant. But um, for my personal taste i quite like the the photo shoot where they're doing the class of 2004 mm. i think there's a, a huge amount of joy in that scene mm. and it's kind of like her really blossoming that this is this is what i want to do with my life sort of thing and this this how i want things to work out and getting matt on side i suppose yeah sorry what were you going to say about boyfriends <laughs> Oh, I was just going to say, it's so weird that he keeps calling her Sweet Bottom because I've never heard anybody say Sweet Bottom in my whole life before that. I film. get that all the time, honestly. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Love it. A sweet Bottom. Did you write the script, Gary? No, I didn't write the script. No. <laughs> Actually, maybe Sweet weird, Bottom. It might be. Thing to say. I think it might be Daft Ass. I get called. It's one of the two. <laughs> Very similar. It's one of the two. But the, the photograph scene, I love the photograph scene because, again, it's, it sort of like calls out the theme, which is about yeah. he works with this glossy magazine where everything's sort of superficial and just glossy beauty. And yeah. she goes, no, that's not what we're going to be. We're going we're gonna to reinvent ourselves. And it's all about just humanness Absolutely. and experience and friendship and things. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. It's the theme of the film, isn't it? It's lovely. It is. Um, best line or one-liner in the film? Have you got one of those? So- I love the bit where she meets Lucy for the first time. Jenna meets Lucy. She's outside in the limousine and she does this whole speech. She's like, I was 13, I was 13, I swear. And I was, then I woke up and there was a man in my, in my shower and, a, and I saw his thingy. And Lucy goes, oh no, not his thingy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just so perfectly delivered. <laughs> Excellent. Gary? There's loads, there's loads of lines. Again, yeah. it's only funny if you, you know, if you believe that this woman thinks she's a 13 year old child. Yeah. There's just loads of them. It's very funny. Um, there's one line uh, which I remember, which is the kind of the, the theme of it is basically her boyfriend is saying, "Who's your, who's your daddy?" And she just looks sort of straight face and goes, uh, "Mr. Wayne Rink," which you know, her dad. You know, <laughs> just, yeah. yeah. I was from the same, the same point of view of that. Um, 
a 13 year old. It's the one where she's in the lift with the girl, and the girl goes, It's a nice stretch. That's because I've got these incredible boobs to fill it out with. It's just... <laughs> The type of thing you can see someone saying that didn't have boobs that uh, minute ago. Um, <laughs> best cameo? Have you got a? F- oh, this is there a so, is there a cameo? I, well, there I'm is. I'm confused by this because I didn't I didn't know that there were any famous oh. people in it. So have I missed something really big? Do you know what there is? Gav's good at um, this. Gav's good at getting cameos. One of the six chicks back when they're thirteen is Brie Larson, who of course became no Miss way. Marvel. No way! Yeah. So there you go. That's that's. I think the only real cameo good. in there. But wow. good. You always yeah, get so these. A young Brie Larson appears as a well, a thirteen-year-old, I guess. Brie Larson appears. Wow. In this. There you go. Wow. Did not know. Wow. There you go. That's my movie trivia for the day. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I'm out. <laughs> yeah. You're going to remake the film. Oh, oh. recasting it. How are we going to recast all the major mm-hmm. roles of the film? Who's going to oh act my God. in these new cast? Okay. And you can even I don't think it, it has to be all of them, but is there no, any that no. you go, if you go, if, I, if, we, if we recast this actor, this actress, it would be a better film. If, we, if we've got any casting things, we have the power to do that. Maybe like, I mean, I think that they're all perfect. I literally think yeah. they're all perfect. Yeah, they do like, fit roles. But if, if like, one of them was indisposed, like, if Mark Ruffalo was, like, having a penis mm-hmm. extension or something, then, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Mark, I'm sure Too busy being the Hulk, yeah. <laughs> um, so, like, I'm trying to think who else could play them. I mean, like, he's so good. Um, I'm thinking that maybe there could be another himbo because I think they're kind of ten a penny. So, yeah, yeah obviously... Yeah. Like somebody like I don't know Channing Tatum could yeah. play Alec easily, yeah. I think. Um, and then like Judy, I think. Um, oh, because there there are a lot of character actresses, aren't there? Yeah. So yeah. I'm trying to think. Um, I've forgotten what her name is. I think her first name is Lane. Lane something. What's she been in? See if I can... Oh, God. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, this is what, what I'm getting It's all right. Don't to. worry. It's all um, right. We'll but... edit it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, I just I just love them all. So over to you. All right. Okay. Gary, have you got any ideas for him? Um... No. I, I'm usually quite... I, this is my big thing, isn't it? My big bugbears. Yeah, and you oh, the really good film that should have just re- <laughs> recast that one. This is... I, but no, I, I think actually they, they kind of they kind of got it right. I mean, yeah. certainly the leads worked well. I think they, I believe they totally with the chemistry between them. Mm. I love Mark Ruffalo in you know every, the stuff he does. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I suppose Andy Circus maybe you mentioned the fact he's not gay. I mean, they're, yeah. they're, I'm sure he doesn't have to be English, does he? I'm sure there could be gay comedic actors who could have done the brought more comedy. Many to the role, people could have done more, it. Yeah, I suppose. More yeah. authentic comedy to the role. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think Andy Serkis is naturally that good a comic actor. You're so. probably right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've just thought like Ooh. she's too pretty, really. She's too pretty to play um Lucy. But if you wanted more diversity in the film, you could mm-hmm. get Zendaya because I, I think she could have that sarcasm. Yeah. Yeah. He would be brilliant at that. Yeah, that but, would be good, know. actually, yes. But yeah, yeah. maybe that would go in better with the um, the nose jobs and things that she's become much more pretty through um, through time. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'll go away from recasting it because um, Mark Ruffalo has been on the news recently because apparently because he's recently done um, the Adam Project, which he stars in with Jennifer Garner again as mm. his wife in it, and oh, he's yes. talked about a sequel. To thirteen, going on thirty. No way! There's not one in the in the making, is there? Well, apparently, there's an idea of there could be a sequel to it. Ooh. So, my question to you was going to be: if there was a sequel, what, what would you want to see happen in a sequel to this? How would you want oh it to God. play out? So, I mean, like, I would be devastated if if he and uh, Jennifer split up, like, or even had problems, but. Um, maybe there's some kind of school reunion 
and that would be quite cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't know how you'd kind of structure the plot, really. Um, maybe, like, it could be, I don't know, 30 going on 60 or something like that, and you see them when they're... <laughs> she wakes up and she's 60-year-old. <laughs> Her marriage has gone to crap. <laughs> she's got to build it back somehow. <laughs> maybe instead of <laughs> maybe yeah <laughs> that would be funny makes the instead dementia thing her... work better <laughs> maybe the wishing just goes wrong and instead of her waking up as a 13 year old again she wakes up as a like 60 year old and then she's like shit <laughs> in a home with an um, adult diaper on and <laughs> <laughs> but maybe maybe like <laughs> <laughs> maybe Wendy has like I don't know she has to like find some way of ending up with Matt age right. 60 and like her and Wendy's mar him and Wendy's <laughs> marriage needs to be undermined or maybe when Wendy's cheating on him or something because she wants a guy who's a bit bigger and no, I'm joking <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I'm <laughs> like I don't know. And I would be quite wary of a sequel because A, I don't yeah. know what the hell you could do with it. And yeah. B, like if I saw it and it was shit, it would totally ruin like yeah. what is a wonderful film. Yeah. Like I just don't really. Yeah, it's like Sex in the C Sex and City of the movie was great. And then Sex in the City 2 was not great at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's, she, like, has marital problems with Big because he buys her a telly for her birthday. I'd love a telly for my birthday. He bought her, like, <laughs> a massive telly. It's, like, great, you know? At least it wasn't a toaster or, you know, something yeah. small and rubbish. Or, or a vacuum didn't cleaner. Forget her exactly. Yeah. And, it, like, father of the bride. And, you know, he didn't forget her birthday. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I think, like, having a really flimsy plot and then hanging everything around it yeah. is what they did wrong. And I just wouldn't want this to, to happen yeah. with a sequel to 13 going on 30. Yeah. Most of me, I, I did wonder how they could do it because the kind of the, the whole hook of this is you've got this time travel body swap type thing going on. And to then do a sequel when you've kind of closed it off, you closed off the story with them being 30 again at the end and they're together. So if they close the story off with them being back at 13, then you could say, yeah, you could do something still. But they didn't, did they? So. No. Uh, difficult one to do, I think. Um, yeah, it's what, 18 years old now? How do you think this holds up as a film? So I think it is very much of its time. Um, and as you say, so no diversity really. Yeah. But also, I mean, print magazines being like a going concern. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> magazines are dying, sadly. Print is dying. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, there's like, there doesn't seem to be any kind of online presence for the magazine, which is unheard yeah. of these days. Yeah. Um, and I think like the music at the, I mean, obviously nobody's going to be putting Thriller on really. I mean, they would put Thriller <laughs> on, but they wouldn't like know the dance moves to it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't think they would have known the dance moves to it in 2004, but yeah. so that's yeah. a bit of a stretch even, but um. There's stuff like um, she still has a landline phone. Yeah, yeah, true. Like true. She goes, I'm going to a party in a limo, you know, and um, so there's that. Yeah. There's um, just the, like the decor in her apartment, maybe a little bit dated. Um, I think she still has like some kind of, it's not a brick of a mobile phone, but it's definitely maybe <laughs> like a Nokia. <laughs> and, um, you know, like she didn't, she doesn't know what the, the ringtone is because she's never yes. seen a mobile phone. So she's yeah. like, what? what's that? What's that music? And he's yeah. like, it's probably just Richard. And um, so, yeah, the um, that definitely dates it. I'm trying yeah. to think what else. I mean, obviously there's no social media. No. Otherwise, like Lucy would be properly bitchy on social media. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But there isn't any. <laughs> and, and they would have gone viral with their thriller, thriller dance as well, wouldn't they? Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. somebody would have filmed it and put it on YouTube, yeah. like like happened with me. <laughs> that didn't go viral. <laughs> but, it will yeah, do. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Once our three listeners get onto it, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like, it, it's fantastic. I mean, like, I think 
that if you just watch it and you just think of it as of its era, yeah, that's absolutely fine. I don't yeah. think every film needs to be set no. like these days. No. It can just be, you know, not a period piece exactly, but it is. It's just of that era, and that's yeah. that's that's great. Okay, is there anything we've missed? Is there anything that we've because oh, we've we've skipped through the film quite quickly? Was there anything that you kind of bursting that you still need to say about the film that? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, other than that, I'm never going to be able to listen to Ice Ice Baby in the same way again. <laughs> no, I can't either now. No. Sexy striptease. No. <laughs> Wasn't the best, was it? <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Big question. This is the tough one. Um, can you sell the film in about 30 seconds? Okay. So it's a sweet warm and witty, witty rom-com not a witty rom-com <laughs> it's a sweet warm and witty rom-com and I think you'll love it if you want to watch something big hearted and emotional um, but it will make you cry it makes me cry um, and it is a real roller coaster of a chick flick lots of funny bits it's perfect for anybody who grew up in the 80s and 90s um, even 2000s it's a bit mushy and you know it's an ideal film to see on a date um I imagine that if you're like a proper blokey macho bloke who only likes to watch like car chases and stuff like that, then it's probably not the film for you. It's it's not like Mission Impossible. It's all to do with emotions and, you know, so maybe give it a miss if, if that's you. But otherwise, because I think a lot of men really do like chick flicks, like deep I down, like they don't want to admit yeah. it, yeah. but they do secretly <laughs> like them. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's really good. Um, out there in the big wide world, obviously we've got the, the new magazine. Where can we find you out there? Where can we get in contact? Is there anything you want to sell other than your new magazine? That type of thing. Come. <laughs> well, do you know the weird thing, right? Is that not only does my life seem to be paralleling Jenna's, I have also written a body swap comedy. <gasps> ah. Yeah. And I wrote it in 2004. <gasps> Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. It is it is it is X-rated though. It's very oh. X-rated. <laughs> it is called Shitcom. <laughs> and as the title would suggest, it's full of swearing. If you enjoy hilarious and outrageous and slightly offensive comedy, then you might like Shitcom. It is about two comedy writers who swap bodies. And there's no time travel involved. They just swap bodies. Um, and hilarity ensues there. <laughs> um, as we've been talking about penises all this episode, um, well, one you of have. The, well, I have, sorry, <laughs> me and Gav. <laughs> God, I meant to be being you know, a new job, I meant to be being a little bit more decorous and stuff, but um, yeah, they won't listen to this. Hopefully, don't listen to this. <laughs> you um, won't I mean, nobody <laughs> listens to this, honestly. Don't worry about it. Phew, <laughs> no, so basically, um. They swap bodies and uh, one of them, ha the one with the small penis has been taking pills to try and make his penis bigger. And the first time he realizes he swapped bodies, like, but he, do he doesn't know, um, he goes to the toilet and there's no mirror and he just sees that his penis has got really big. And he's like, it's worked. The pills have worked. <laughs> and he doesn't know why the hair around his penis is ginger. And he thinks it's a side effect of the pills. But he's like, I don't care. I'm just going to dye it. So it's like, it's it's very, it's um, a massive adventure. It involves um, drugs and porn and all kinds of, you know, bad things but it's um it's a lot of fun so um that's where can on, we find uh, that that's on amazon it's on right. kindle and it's um paperback very reasonable price is only 1.99 for the kindle and oh. 6.99 for the paperback and um i promise that you will enjoy it it has a like 4.8 out of five stars on amazon oh, wow cool wow. cool cool there you go Thank that's you a recommendation much. definitely <laughs> I'll, I'll find that now Oh, thank you so much. I hope you enjoy it. Oh, definitely. I'll let you know. we'll, share that, we'll share that on our socials and our links. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Along with a um, thriller dance. Yes. Your thriller dance. <laughs> oh, yeah. Your boot. Cool. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much for coming on. It oh, has been thanks, a man. pleasure talking oh, about this. Oh, you're so welcome. It's been so much fun. I've really enjoyed it. It's thank been lovely. So thanks, thanks very much. Okay. Cheers.
Take it. Bye. Bye. Jenna, why are you here? Yesterday was my 13th birthday, and today I woke up and I'm this. There's something really weird going on. Thank you, Ariane. It was fantastic to talk to you about that film. I think that's it for this week. So if you want to contact us here on the podcast, the best way of doing it is by your email. That's my favorite film podcast at gmail.com. What about Twitter, Gary? Uh, yeah, on Twitter, we're at my fair film. Fantastic. Um, and then Instagram, we're at my favorite film podcast. And our, on Facebook, you can search for my favorite film. And our website is www.com myfavoritefilm.com brilliant and obviously if you want to support the podcast the best way of doing it is if you pop on over to spotify where you can give us a five star rating five stars i think is the best way of doing it and then on, the best. yeah five it stars is, definitely and then apple podcasts and good pods let you leave a rating and review and apparently having text within the reviews helps you get found more on the search engine so next week we are talking to Eurovanko who is the marketing director for Filmsy, a new streaming service that is free all over the place. And he's going to talk about what we do in the shadows. Here is Euro's trailer. Guys, if you like Monty Pythons, if you like absurd scenes, if you like humor that is beyond normal, it's paranormal, basically. If you are into vampires and witches and werewolves, then definitely you should go and see how they really, really live in a real documentary based on the people, the undead people actually, living in the Wellington area because they are fighting with much more problems than just looking for the blood. Right, so that's next week. That's Eurovanko. Uh, until then, from us, it's bye-bye. Bye-bye. Finally, thanks to Acast for hosting the website and to Max Smith for the theme tune composition. To get in touch with the podcast, remember that website is www.myfavoritefilm.com.